Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guns and Guitars, and I'm very excited today because I have a new brand of tools to try out. Okay, I've been looking for a good value, budget-friendly line of tools to endorse here on my channel. Stuff that we can use for our, you know, day-to-day -day guitar building and whatever else. And so I'm excited to try out Toolant, and I want to thank them for sponsoring this video. Uh, I've got a few tools from them that are just kind of my daily driver tools, and uh, I'm really excited to test them and see how they work. I would love to be doing this from inside my new workshops, but as you can see, still a bit of chaos happening here. Apparently, it takes a long time to turn a shed into a workshop. But uh, let's find out if Toolant tools are any good. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars. Let's get started. All right, so when I say daily driver tools, I mean like my most used tools in general, not necessarily just for guitar building. Of course, because this is Guns and Guitars, we're gonna focus mostly on their application for guitar building. But even in guitar building, the number one thing that I spend the vast majority of time on is sanding. I spend more time sanding than any other task building guitar. So I'm excited. I've got some orbital sander pads to try out. I've also got some longboard sanding tape that we can use on our sanding beam so that we can level off the frets. So uh, we're going to be doing some work to this neck and I'm just going to try this stuff out. I also got some sweet uh, step drill bits. These are something that I thought that I wouldn't use nearly as often as I actually use. And then the last thing I got, and these aren't things that I typically use for guitar building, although I think there might be an application for guitar building, are just these cutting bits for a oscillating multi-tool. Again, not something that I'm sure that I will use a whole lot for guitar building, but I do want to use these tools to finish working on my workshop and that will be very handy. So I'm excited to test that out as well. All right, so I think out of all these tools, the one that makes the most sense to start with is probably the longboard roll of sandpaper, just so we can go ahead and level down the frets. I noticed right off the bat that this sandpaper is kind of more like an emery cloth abrasive, and it's definitely aluminum oxide, I can tell by the feel of it, very similar to the Duragold stuff that I typically use. And so I'll go ahead and open that up. You can see uh, the Duragold is maybe just a little bit wider, and again, aluminum oxide, but you'll notice that this has like diamond-shaped channels in it. And I'm very excited to try this out because the number one reason why I end up having to change out the sandpaper on my leveling beam is not because the sandpaper wears out, but that's one of the reasons why I like the Duragold sandpaper is because it seems to last longer than most abrasives. But as you can see, it gets clogged up, especially doing frets, the little tiny metal particles in there. I try to stop and clean it off from time to time, but it just gets packed into that 400 grit sandpaper and then I have to pull it off and change it out. It is adhesive backed, again, just like the Duragold stuff that I use. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off and stick it on. So different, it's almost in a league of its own. I mean, it just feels way higher quality. Electrocoded, according to this, whatever that means. Electrocoded aluminum oxide. Such a stark difference from the Duragold already, just in the fit and the finish of it. So very excited to see how this performs. All right, we're gonna double check real quick that this is in fact straight with our straight edge. And uh, that's as, as straight as it's gonna get. Honestly, the reason why I have this neck is because I didn't deem it worthy enough for my last round of pre-orders. It was so far out of spec. So I don't even know if it's savable. That's why it's a good neck to test out new products on. Interesting. So you can already see where that dust is falling off onto the neck instead of getting clogged up into my sandpaper. <sighs> That's nice. This stuff seems extremely productive for 400 grit. So I'm a little nervous about that, although it doesn't look like it's making too deep of scratches. <laughs> So that's how out of spec this neck is. You can see the buildup right here of the dust in this middle section. And then it's also happening down here at the very bottom. I'm really impressed with how this thing's not clogging. I mean, look, it still looks perfectly clean. Like I just put it on there. I mean, look at that. It just, it falls right off and it lands right on the fretboard. Man. Well, that did not take long at all. Uh, in fact, that probably took about the same amount of time that would have taken me if I used my other method, which you saw in my perfect fretwork video of how I step up through the different various grits to kind of speed up the process a bit. But yeah, I think 
I'm looking at the time on my camera. It took me five minutes to level these out. And these frets, I mean, I'm gonna zoom in on them close so you can see. I had to take a lot of material off of some of these frets. It's very productive. I'm very happy with the finish that's left on them. I mean, I wouldn't say that it's the smoothest. The Dirt Gold probably leaves a little bit smoother finish, but I think once we crown these and polish them, they're actually gonna polish up just fine. So now I'm going to shape and drill the headstock and drilling, this is something that uh, I've started using step bits for. I found that if I just drill a small pilot hole at first, then I can use step bits and that helps keep my holes on center much better than if I start with the size drill bit that I need. All right, so real quick, I just wanna zoom in on the difference between these, okay? So here's my trusty Harbor Freight spiral step bit that I've been using. And you can see that it's just a straight flute, but here we have this one from Tulint, which I believe is cobalt and has spiral flutes in it. And I think that's supposed to help it cut a bit better. And then same thing uh, with the quarter to three quarter step bit. You can see I have my Harbor Freight one here and it's taped off at 9 16 That's where we're gonna stop because that's the hole I need for a base tuning machine. And then I went ahead and taped off the Tulint one as well. And as you can see, yeah, it has that awesome cobalt steel and spiral fluting. All right, so we're gonna start off here with the Harbor Freight drill bit and I went ahead and put in a fresh topped off battery just so that this is as fair as possible. All right, let's time it all the way through. All right, and I was pushing way harder than I normally would for that. Uh, that was pretty quick. Not too bad for the Harbor Freight one. Okay, we'll take the average of those two. And then what I usually do is I actually come to the back. You can see how it kind of blows out a little bit in the back. And so I usually just come through here and just kind of ream those up so that they're nice and clean. All right, and it still left a little bit of a burr. So that's worth taking note. All right, okay, fresh charge, let's go. Holy cow. <laughs> Dang, once that thing bit, it went. Okay, let's try it again. Holy cow. <laughs> it did chew up a little bit, but again, I'm pushing a lot harder than you ever should with these. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to cutting speed, oh, that left a much better finish on this side though. When it comes to cutting speed, <laughs> this is definitely the winner. Okay, all right, so this one I actually decided I'm not gonna go for speed because I am going for the final finish on this and we're just going up to the you know, 9 16 so I don't wanna accidentally press behind, beyond that. Um, so we'll just take it nice and easy like I normally would. And then flip it over and do the finish part of that. Pretty good. All right, now we're on to the toolant spiral cut bit. That was an interesting sound that's making. Oh gosh. Well, that just plunged in. It grabbed like the other one and just went straight in. Hmm. Yeah. You gotta be careful, that one's much better. That first one, I went a little too deep on accident. All right, let's finish them up on the back. I do not like the sound that that's making. It's odd. Same thing. Oh man. I actually wonder if this one might be a little out of balance. That did not feel right. Hmm. I mean, when it comes to cutting speed, no doubt about it. I mean, watch this. Hmm. 
right? <laughs> I don't know, guys. I'm not sure how I feel about these. They might be a little too productive for what I'm trying to do here. I had recommended previously Duragold as well as Gator as kind of my go-to value brands of sandpaper. Of course, at that point, I hadn't tried these new Toolant sandpapers. And this is a variety pack from 60 grit all the way up to 400 grit, which is is really nice value pack. And typically I would start at 120 and then go 220 and then 320 and call it good after 320. Based on how productive the other sandpaper that I've used so far, I'm actually just gonna start with 240 and I am using my sanding sponge attachment for the orbital uh, because this is a contoured surface. That's again, one of those things that I showed in my best sanding accessories video so definitely check that out because that's a game changer when it comes to sanding something like the back of a neck well holy cow that made quick work of that okay like a doofus i didn't actually show you the scratches before and after and so i need to show you that it's hard to get the exposure to show off these scratches there's some deeper grooves right in here just below the volute and then above it where they did this little scoop down for the headstock. There's tons of just vertical lines from whatever machine carved this out. And uh, again, I'm trying my best to get those to show up on camera because it really is impressive how productive the sandpaper is. Um, and being 240, it of course leaves a very smooth finish. And now we'll sand it off real quick. <laughs> Well, I can't see them anymore. Spin that mic around. I'm trying to do this in one take. Sorry if this is a boring video, but now we just have a beautiful, almost glass-like finish. I guess glass-like's a bit of an exaggeration. Like a 240 grit finish. But still, I mean, look at that. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see on camera what the scratches looked like before, but certainly you can see after. That looks so much better now. So now I'm gonna go ahead and finish sanding this whole neck. And I'm just gonna see if this thing leaves a smooth enough finish that I don't even have to go up to 320 or 400. Look at that. Not even clogged a bit. Ooh, that's warm too. I was pressing hard. Yeah, I could probably sand a whole other neck just with this same sanding disc. It's still good to go. And man, this finish. I mean, look at how wonderfully it rounded out this transition here to the heel. And yeah, I don't see any marks left from the factory and just a beautifully smooth finish. I don't think I need to go over this with any more sandpaper. I think this is ready for a finish. You guys know that I value honesty and integrity above anything else on my channel, which is why I have no problem saying that I'm not so sure about those drill bits, especially for guitar building, but this sandpaper is the best sandpaper I've ever used on an orbital sander. Uh, oh, I have one more tool that I need to test, and it's not really a guitar building tool, it's that multi-tool blade. And so let's just do some cut tests real quick. You know, why not? As long as we are working on a neck that I'm not actually gonna use, why don't we try to use uh, the multi-tool cutting bits to see if we can't cut out this headstock shape. So zoomed in, taking a close look at these. This is the Harbor Freight one. And this is just the standard, I think, bimetal for cutting hardwood. This one is the one from Tulint. This is the T-Rex carbide titanium, uh, wood and metal. And so it's, I noticed it's got a bit finer teeth on it. So this might not be a fair test, but I'm curious to see how, how it holds up to just the standard Harbor Freight one. I bought these to do some drywall work in my workshop. So <laughs> this headstock is not exactly what I got these for. This is the Harbor Freight one first. All right, 
not exactly graceful, <laughs> but I guess it did get the job done. And so maybe you could use a multi-tool like this in a pinch if you needed to. We got the good old T-Rex carbide tooth attachment here. And well, I didn't really do myself any favors by cutting off the easiest access side. I guess we'll just dive right in, see what happens. So already I've had to make way deeper passes than I had to do with this one. And I gotta say, it's doing it pretty gracefully, all things considered. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Look at how deep I can cut that. And like I said, all things considered, fairly gracefully. I don't know, I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut the rest of this headstock out with it just for fun. Can you believe I did that with just two cuts? Two very clean cuts, actually. Wow, what a difference a fresh battery makes. I thought that maybe this thing was getting dull and that's why it wasn't cutting very productive. Nope, I was just low on battery. This thing is cutting just as good as when I started. All right, now, according to my camera, that only took eight minutes to do uh, with this bit. Well, I guess technically a couple minutes of that was with the Harbor Freight bit. So probably looking more like 10 minutes, right? Eight minutes, just the portion that I did with the toolant bit. And that's pretty impressive. Obviously the results are not great in this application, um, but I would never recommend this tool for shaping a headstock, obviously. This is really just a test to see how productive these tools are and if this is a brand that I actually wanna get behind. And I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. All right, so what we need to determine here is if toolant is a great value brand that I should get behind. So I'm definitely curious your guys' thoughts, so let me know down in the comments. I gotta say, sandpaper, uh, that's an easy yes for me. Hands down the best sandpaper that I've used to date, especially for the price. So, and of course I will put links down in the description to all the stuff that you saw in this video today. And so again, let me know down in the comments if you think Toolant is a brand that I should get behind and see if they wanna sponsor some more videos. Uh, the reason why I chose the products that I did, sandpaper, drill bits, cutting bits, I mean, that's the easy stuff. If you can't get that stuff right, then what else are you gonna get right? Um, but I would say for the most part, they really knocked it out of the park and I'm excited to see what else they might have in store. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I've got a video coming up about putting these sheds together and optimizing them to be the best guitar building workshop for me. And so you probably wanna see that video. All right, see you next time.